Hey guys, it's Edgar with Pool Nation, Pool Nation podcast, poolmanuniversity.com. Today we are talking to the legend Bob Larry. If you don't know who Bob is, he has written 21 books in the water chemistry for our industry. And we're going to put the links on this video. If you want to check out those books, you can purchase them from Amazon. Check the links below. Bob, I want to ask you, I used to do a lot of pools and I had pools where I would get flakes in the spa and I'd come in one week and I'd clean those flakes out and I would come back the next week and boom, there's all those flakes again into the pool. Where are all those flakes coming from? From the spa or from a, a chlorine generator? Which a chlorine one? generator. It was a, sorry, it was a pool and a spa combo with the salt generator, but I would always find those flakes okay. in the pool. All right, so uh, flakes coming from the spa is a whole nother, a whole nother thing. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but anyway, um, we get this question a lot and um, the, the flakes, the, the short answer is that the flakes are probably calcium carbonate. And I hear a lot that, that they're, they're possibly calcium phosphate. And my answer usually to that is no. And the reason really is that, that the amount of phosphate that's in the pool is really not very much. And it's because we measure it on a different scale that we think it's high. We say, oh my God, I've got 2000 parts per billion of phosphate in the water. And, and we don't realize what that really means. But the meaningful thing is that 2,000 parts per million of phosphate in the water is only two parts per million. So it takes 1,000 parts per million to make one part uh, per billion to make one part per million. So, um, so the amount of phosphate that's in the pool, um, even if you precipitated all of it, wouldn't be very much. So um, it's probably calcium carbonate. And it got, <clears throat> it got in the the uh, chlorine generator cells because uh, calcium carbonate precipitated. And what happens in the cell itself? We are making sodium hydroxide and, and it has a very high pH. We are making, um, we have lots of calcium in the water. And most people don't realize this, but the, the cells are almost like a toaster or an oven. And, and we are generating uh, hot electricity. And so the cell is being cooled by, you know, 30 to 50, 80 gallons a minute going through it. But when the cell, when the, the water stops, the water that's in the chlorine generator, it doesn't boil, but it gets really hot. And calcium is in the water and when, when the water gets hot, calcium comes out of the water. It's the reverse of sugar. You know, you can put two or three teaspoons full of sugar in iced tea, and when it warms up a little bit, you can put more. And if you boil it, you can put in a whole bunch of sugar. So it's the reverse of that. As the water gets hot, calcium comes out. So, so we have this, this system where we've got a, a, a cell that's going to get warm the minute the water shuts off. So one of the biggest advices that I can give you about taking care of the pool is to see if you can turn off the cell about five or 10 minutes before the water flow turns off so that they don't shut off together and you get that hot water inside the cell because it is precipitating calcium carbonate and it's sticking on the cell right now. And then tomorrow it comes on and the calcium is still stuck on there. But as soon as the cell's polarity reverses, which most cells today have a polarity reversal, when it reverses polarity, that calcium comes off of that electrode and goes right into the pool and you get white flakes or you get what a lot of people say is pool dandruff in your pool. And, and the flakes don't ever go away. And you think, well, gee, I've got good water chemistry. I've got, why is this happening? Number one reason is that you probably, the water is shut, the, 
water and the chlorine generator shutting down together. So you want those to shut off, the, the cell to turn off before the water flow does, so it cools it down. And um, secondly, um, you wanna keep a slightly negative uh, LSI. So if you're calculating the saturation index, instead of it being slightly positive, you want it to be slightly negative. And it can be anything from, from zero to negative 0.2 or something like that would be still be okay. And by doing those two things, you'll probably eliminate the, the calcium clays. Um, certainly keeping the calcium level lower also and the pH and alkalinity a little bit lower too. But um, the two biggest things you can do is turning it off uh, before the water flow stops and keeping a slightly lower uh, LSI. Great, thanks, Bob. Guys, I, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Uh, end of this video, we're gonna show you the class dates and the times for Bob's NES certifications. Bob, thank you for your time. As always. And we'll talk soon. Great to be here. Thanks.